Morning all. Let's get the heating working. Got our new um thingy tank. What was this? A yeah. glyco tank. Uh, yeah, got the new glyco tank, the one that can actually fit in there. So today's plan is to actually turn the heating on and test it and hopefully have no errors, no leaks, nothing wrong with it, and it can just work forevermore. So step one is to put that tank under that seat and connect it with that pipe to our line. Yeah. Because last time the old tank did not fit. Yeah, so uh, this tank has to be the highest point in the system or um, you have to do other stuff which I don't know how. So it's just going to be at the highest point, point in the system. Somehow right here. Yep. Like this. Uh, I really hope we don't have to drill another hole. So um, here's a tank, uh, looking very innocent and cute. Right, so see all the way back. Slide it forward. Yeah, and there's our, our rig in there. Mm -hmm. And for those wondering how sturdy two screws are, by the way, pretty sturdy. That's not going to come off. Yep. There we are. Okay, so let's move on with our lives. So we need to connect that outlet yep. to this yep. T-piece right here. So pipe there to there. That is the plumbing done. Let's go and get some ice cream and then we can tackle this. Okay, so we've prepared all, all the cables that we need to basically uh, plug in and play. We have followed the instructions that came with the heater. Now, we have a whole video on uh, uh, how the wiring of this uh, sort of um, uh, Espa hydraulic diesel heater has to go. So we're going to link up that video so uh, you can check out that information in detail if you need it. So for today, we're not going to focus too heavily on the explanation behind the wiring, but we are going to connect uh, the air matrix and the controllers. Now, to make everything work, we need to connect the furnace which is underneath the van to power the a matrix to power the a matrix controller to power then the furnace has its own controller which has its own cables thankfully prepared from the company and we didn't have to cut them up but that also needs to be connected and we need to make sure that the matrix can actually read this controller can they can actually communicate so that has a, has a cable as well so all of those are somewhere around me and we need to basically just plug them in because we have now prepared all of the cables that the instructions say that we need they've been connected with the appropriate spade connectors uh o-ring connectors pin connectors the pin connectors were horrible to crimp we actually had to solder them a little bit what do we connect first let's um, connect the uh giant pile of wires over there let's sort out what we need to connect from that first so this is the thing that powers the furnace and this side goes to the furnace controller mainly yeah. okay and there's a lot of things that you can do with a uh, um, mixture of these cables and different co combinations I just know that I need I need this I need this to plug in to the uh, furnace controller that is the furnace controller unit and its cable is here it's already connected on the back so that is the s-bar controller connected to the heater that's under the van Right. So oh, that... we can do this one. Hold on. But, th no, but this was easy. E easy. Look. Wait. Mm. Wait. Pump. Wait. So the controller unit now goes around the back of the batteries and goes under the van. Yes. What did you find? The pump cable. Yeah, I can just just plug it in there. Can there I do it now? There you go. <laughs> Happy now? So that's the S-Bar controller connected. That's the glyco pump connected. Now on the other fork of the uh, wires coming from the furnace, we should have the power cable for the furnace. So it the says fuse box negative from furnace from the brown. 
yeah. and fuse box positive from the furnace uh, on, on the black red one. Right, so they need to be connected to our fuse box there. And according to our labels, furnace is that one. All right, there you go. Yep, that's the furnace connected. Shall we do, what do you want to do next? Air matrix or the air matrix controller? I'm air matrix start. You well, we, air. well, you start here, right? Yes. No matter what you do, you start here. So let's just power that up and then we'll go up that way. Okay. Would you like to explain the banana? The banana? The weird thing there, what is it actually called? Electronic PWM module. Yeah. So I think AKA this, the banana. The banana. I think it has something to do because our air matrix can have variable fan speeds. It needs to uh, alternate the voltage going into the air matrix to make the fan spin faster or slower. And that's what that module does. So coming out the back of our dual fan air matrix, which by the way is the Silencio 2. So at the back of this thing, we have two orange wires two black wires and two red wires. From what I can tell, black is negative and the orange is positive. We need to connect the positive and the negative to our banana here. So we've got here on the end, a dual port, one for the positive and one for the negative. Also another tip, this and the banana have to be 10 centimeters or closer. Bye bye. So, connect these to the battery and connect that to the control module up there. Oh, we're going to have to take that down, aren't we? Right, so this is the uh, uh, controller and that's the back, that's what we're aiming for. We've got a two pin port, that's for the temperature sensor, and then this four pin port, uh, well... That's, that's this one, yeah. okay, that, 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 that's where the yellow and the power connector connections go. So port 3 it says is uh, not connected, we don't need to use that one. And port 1 and 2 is power again, mm -hmm. yep, power for the actual um, controller module. So again, these three wires don't come with the kit, we've had to make them ourselves and uh, measure the correct length. Screw that back up. Just don't put it in upside down. Excellent. So the yellow wire is connected and then we just need to connect the um, power wire for that down here to our fuse box and then we can prime the system. Right, um, what's next? Is there anything else? Oh, what about the fuses? We ah. can put them in now, because to prime the system, you know, you need... To turn it on, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so do we know what kind of fuses we need for these? Yeah, hold on. Instructions to the rescue. So, the red and black coming from the banana is a 10 amp fuse. The uh, thin one coming from the actual control module, which is... That one, the third one along, is a 5 amp fuse. Okay. Cool. Now, the remaining one, which is coming from the heater, well, we put a 20 amp fuse over there. Okay. In that. So, I guess we put a 20 amp fuse here as well. Because it's powering see. the same thing. We just have to put a fuse in our fuse box. Alright, fuses everywhere. Okay. Right, so we've got our kill switch off, so there's no power running to this right. at the moment. See, see, the fuses are in, so basically this is, this is safer if you need to do something yep. before everything's on. So, do you do you mean to prime the pump? Yeah, we should go and prime the fuel pump prime, under the van prime first. Prime the pump without turning the power on? Yeah, we don't want to turn the power on. 
right. the moment. Well, you can you can explain why. Come with me to under the van. So before we turn on the system, there's two things that we actually need to prime. There's the glycol, and then there's also the fuel pump. So we're going to start with the fuel pump since that's under the van. So we ran an auxiliary fuel line into our fuel tank. And at the moment, that line is dry of diesel, which means when you first turn it on, the diesel has to travel all the way from the fuel tank to the fuel pump before the fuel pump actually gets lubrication. So what we're going to do to not damage the fuel pump and help it along is we're going to manually suck the diesel from the fuel tank to just before the fuel pump so that when we turn the fuel pump on initially the diesel is right there it can suck it straight up right so this is our fuel pump here and what i'm going to do i'm going to dis detach this connection and attach our siphon pump and suck the fuel until the fuel is here then i can reconnect the fuel pump and then when the fuel pump turns on it only has that short distance to go without any lubrication Take that out, force that in the other side, like that. And now, we should be able to just siphon the fuel. Think it's doing it? Yeah, well the place to watch is the uh, fuel fill tap. Oh, I saw a drop. There oh, we go. Yeah, I see it. That's the diesel coming through. You know you want it. Yeah, there you go. I saw right, so that's come through the uh, the pumps, and now we just need to take this off and pop it back on the uh, fuel pump. All right, there we go. So that's the fuel primed. So now let's head in and put some glyco in the system, and then we can turn it on and it will prime. I don't think we've mentioned in this video, but FYI, not professionals doing this for the first time anything could go wrong anything could go right but if this leaks we'll fix them if there's something going on with the wiring we'll fix it hope any error hopefully we'll fix it as, as long as nothing explodes or we don't short anything which hopefully based on the fact that we, we follow the instructions as much as we could okay let's go so the glycol that we're going with it has to be a 50 50 mix of glycol and water. You can't just put pure glyco in the system, it's too gloopy like honey. And the other thing that you want to check out, this is the type of uh, glyco that you want to run in these sort of hydronic heating systems. That's what was recommended to us, so that's what we went with. Just go slower now because the air from the system is bubbling its way out. So if I stop, see it's still going yeah, I hear in. It. Any leaks? No, I'm just listening. Shh. Ooh, oh, there you go. That's a leak. That's a leak. That's a leak. All right. That's what we were doing. Oh, leak, leak there. Um, I don't have a spanner big enough for this. Oh, hold on, where is it leaking from? Maybe you just need to tighten these. Does it have anything to do with the fact that the, 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 the gravity is pulling it? Or? Because they're the only two that have leaked so far. That no. looks loose. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we've uh, tightened these as much as as much as we could they mm -hmm. were definitely loose yeah definitely but this one though you saw the difference when we touched it before it was rattling straight away that now it's not so yeah these brass connectors were just not tight enough not by far right okay so that seems to have stopped for now so let's carry on pouring in yep uh in other news, no other place seems to have leaked, so that's a nice so win. Including the outside, I went to go and check the underneath of the van, there's nothing there. No drips or anything. Right. Anything at all? I don't hear anything. I don't know, see anything. No, alright, good. Well, we're full. Show me. Yeah, there you go. That's full. See? 
Oh yeah, we are. So what now? Power switch. Right, okay. So, this is the... If I turn this on, that controller should turn on. Ready? Yeah. Oh, we, we have lights. Right, so it'll probably ask us to go through... Language, English. Yes, please. 24 hour clock. Right, furnace is off. So you need to press and hold that button for three seconds and the furnace should turn on. Is that the pump? That's the pump. Or the heater? Not sure. So there's a red ring. What does a red ring mean? I should go and get the instruction manual, shouldn't I? So red ring is heating mode. And then it turns orange when it's up to temperature. Red flashing ring means there's a fault. I think that's the pump. Don't see any leaks. Change the sound. Oh. What is it doing now? Liquid level is still as it was. really want to know if things are working right. This is really weird. Pipe is getting warmer. Not down here at the moment. So that's the pipe from the heater. It's definitely the warmest. It's getting colder now. They're cold. How does it do that? Pump stopped and said H1 water circuit or pump. Alright. What does that mean? Water circuit or pump. Uh, with warm heaters only, water temperature in the heater too high. Okay. Remedying customer. Check the water pump for proper function. Recommendation visit an Ebush Brecker workshop. <laughs> okay. So let's go and have a double check to see that all of our pipes and everything are the right way. Okay. Yeah. Because the pump, yeah, because I've got the the heater on the outside, then it comes in the van, and then there's, you saw, there's the pump on the inside. But yeah, okay. All right. Yeah, yeah. Cool. All right, cheers. All right, bye. <clears throat> right. So the next morning, guys, um, uh, last night it was it was getting to midnight and we could barely see. So uh, the priming of the glyco system didn't go to plan. So we think we've taken care of the, the leak. Uh, so that's fine. But there seems to be air in the system. The pump doesn't seem to be pumping around. No. Um, so that, that noise that you heard, mm -hmm. that is uh, not normal. The, uh, I was just on the phone to the company we bought it from. He said that as soon as the pump gets glyco in, it goes near silent. Right. Um, so that noise is uh, not normal. Okay. So what what seems to be happening is so so, so the electric seems to be working because everything that we have wired seems to turn on. So the pump yeah. turns on, the heater turns on, I mean, uh, actually, if, even uh, the air matrix uh, turns on. But we'll get to that when we fix the <laughs> pump. Um, <laughs> And what seems to happen is the heater is just heating the glyco around it, yeah. but the glyco is not moving around. So uh, the glyco gradually heats up <laughs> going away from the heater. But yeah. as you follow the pipes away from the heater, they quickly go cold because uh, obviously uh, the glyco is not moving. And then the heater thinks either it has reached temperature or it starts to feel like it's overheating. And then it switches off. Yeah, which is good because uh, mm -hmm. in, in this scenario, uh, if it carries on, 
it yeah. can break something very easily. Yeah. So, uh, there seems to be general consensus uh, from everybody that we ask is that, that there's still air in the system. Yeah. I agree because the glyco level mm -hmm. in the tank didn't drop out of them from the leak. Yeah. <laughs> the other thing that he said is even if your tank is the highest point in the system, you would think the air should just bubble its way out and that does not always happen. Why? Why doesn't that happen? Just because if your pipes go up and down a little bit... So it's, it's just the way we position, we yeah. position the pipes. If there's any air in the pump, the pump will make that noise and just not pump around. Um, right, so how do you get air out of the pump? You need to bleed... I don't know how you get air out of the pump. <laughs> he said, he said you, need, you need to somehow bleed the piping in your system, not just rely on the tank to bubble out the air. You need to bleed the other high points in the system to get all the air out the system first. So the advice is either we or someone else has to bleed the air out of the system. We have a very extensive list of tasks and then it keeps growing with things that we have to fix. And then, you know, you know how it is. So, sort of somewhat success, electrics work, um, yeah. plumbing part, not so much. Mm -hmm. um, so, let's not panic. I don't think anything's broken, hopefully, yet. No. So, yeah, we're going to be careful and we're going to get it working promptly. All right, see you. Catch you next time. <laughs>